Welcome back, everybody, for another deep dive. This time, uh, we're going to be looking at the immune system and how it interacts with cancer. Um, more specifically, we're going to be looking at this protein, FOXP3. It's a really interesting protein. Yes, it is. Yeah, so it's a protein that basically controls the special group of cells called T-regs. You might have heard of them before. Regulatory T-cells. They're kind of like the peacekeepers That's of the immune system. Yeah, just like real-world peacekeepers they can be. Really valuable, but... Uh, their presence can sometimes complicate things, right? especially when it comes to cancer. Yeah, and that's what's so fascinating to me about all this. So our source material today is this article called FOXP3, Understanding Regulatory T-Cell Control in Tumor Immunity. And it was published on October 30th, 2024 by Assay Genie. And this article really dives into how this FOXP3 protein could be a game changer when it comes to cancer therapies. Yeah, it's true. Understanding this connection between FOXP3 and these Tregs could unlock some really groundbreaking new treatments. Absolutely. So first things first, can you just break down for us what FOXP3 is? What does it do? Sure. Yeah. So FOXP3 is what we call a transcription factor. And basically what that means is that it's a protein that tells our genes what to do, which ones to turn on, which ones to keep quiet. And the cells that it's primarily directing are these Tregs, the regulatory T cells. So if FOXP3 is like the conductor, the Tregs are like the musicians. Yeah. More like a very specialized unit within the orchestra. They're responsible for making sure that the music doesn't get too chaotic. I like that analogy. Okay, so usually oh. these T-regs under FOXP3's guidance are a good thing, right? They keep the immune system balanced. Exactly. Imagine your immune system as this vigilant security force, constantly on the lookout for threats. So then the T-regs, thanks to FOXP3, are making sure that this force doesn't mistakenly attack our own body's cells. That's how we prevent things like autoimmune diseases. So they're like the internal affairs division, making sure things don't get out of hand. Perfect analogy, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, here's where things get a little bit complicated. In the context of cancer, these Tregs, with their high levels of FOXP3, can actually become a problem. Wait, hold on. I thought we want our immune systems to attack cancer cells. How are the Tregs messing that up? So think of it this way. The area surrounding a tumor, what we call the tumor microenvironment, it can be like a fortress for the cancer cells. And unfortunately, Tregs, heavily influenced by FOXP3, they tend to accumulate in this fortress. So they're essentially guarding the tumor. In a way, yes. And this is bad news because they end up suppressing the very immune cells that we need to fight the tumor. In fact, the article points out that in cancers like melanoma, breast cancer, and ovarian cancer, a high number of these FOXP3 expressing Tregs is actually linked to a poorer prognosis. Oh, wow. So they're protecting the enemy. That's pretty counterintuitive. It is, but it just goes to show how complex our immune systems really are. And the article actually goes even deeper, exploring how FOXP3 enables these Tregs to become such powerful suppressors. Okay, now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. How does it work? How does FOXP3 make the Tregs so good at suppressing our immune response? Well, it's like FOXP3 gives the Tregs a toolkit of suppressive tactics. So for one, it stops other immune cells, the ones that would attack the tumor from multiplying. So it's like telling the immune system soldiers to stand down. Exactly, and it doesn't stop there. FOXP3 also stifles the production of these signaling molecules called cytokines. You can think of cytokines as like the alarm bells that rally the immune system into action. So it's cutting the communication lines. You got it. And the final trick up FOXP3 sleeve is that it can actually make the immune system blind to the cancer cells. It promotes what we call tolerance to tumor antigens. So it's like a triple whammy. Disarming the troops, silencing the alarms, and then making the enemy invisible. It's no wonder that tumors can thrive with FOXP3 pulling the strings. Yeah, it paints a pretty vivid picture. And of course, this has researchers all over the world incredibly interested in finding ways to reprogram FOXP3 to tip the balance back in favor of our immune systems. And this is where it gets really interesting, right? The article mentioned something about new therapies targeting FOXP3. It did. And that's precisely what we'll explore in the next part of our deep dive. We'll uncover the cutting edge research and potential breakthroughs that could change how we fight cancer. So stay tuned. Okay, so we're back. And uh, we're going to talk about these new therapies that are targeting FOXP3. Before the break, we were discussing how FOXP3 basically gives those Tregs the power to suppress our immune response. It's almost like they're protecting the tumor. Right. And that has researchers excited about the possibility of maybe manipulating FOXP3, you know, taking that power away from the Tregs and tipping the scales back in favor of the immune system. It sounds almost too good to be true, but it's probably not that simple, is it? Well, like with a lot of these promising new treatments, 
there are challenges and potential downsides to consider. One of the biggest concerns with targeting FOXP3 is the risk of triggering what we call autoimmune responses. Right. Can you remind me what those are again? Yeah. So autoimmune diseases happen when the immune system starts attacking the body's own healthy cells and tissues. And remember how we talked about the TREGS acting like the immune system's internal affairs division, keeping things in check? Yeah, they make sure the immune response doesn't go overboard. Exactly. Yeah. So if we suppress or eliminate TREGS, especially those expressing high levels of FOXB3, we risk unleashing the immune system in a way that could lead to these autoimmune attacks. So it's a delicate balancing act. We want to boost the immune system's ability to fight cancer, but not at the cost of causing harm to the rest of the body. Exactly. And that's why the article emphasizes the importance of careful patient selection when it comes to these therapies. Figuring out who is most likely to benefit from FOXP3 targeted treatments while minimizing the risk of autoimmune complications is going to be crucial. So it sounds like a personalized approach is going to be key here, not a one-size-fits-all kind of treatment. Absolutely. It's about tailoring treatment to each patient's unique situation and then carefully monitoring them for any signs of autoimmune activity throughout the entire process. But even beyond the concerns about autoimmune responses, there are other challenges when it comes to targeting FOXP3. Like what? What else are researchers dealing with? Well, as we've discussed the tumor microenvironment, that area surrounding the tumor is incredibly complex. It's not just TREGS suppressing immune cells. There's a whole bunch of different cell types. All these signaling pathways and molecules, all contributing to this immunosuppressive environment. So even if we target FOXP3 effectively, there might be other factors at play that prevent the immune system from mounting a strong attack against the tumor. That's the worry, yeah. The article suggests that we might need to address these other players in the tumor microenvironment to really unleash the immune system's full potential. It's not just about flipping a switch. It's more like conducting an entire orchestra. It sounds like a massive puzzle, a multi-layered puzzle that scientists are trying to solve. So what are some of the strategies they're exploring to make these FOXP3 targeted therapies more effective? Well, one promising area is the development of even more specific and targeted therapies. Like, Imagine if we could selectively deplete those tregs within the tumor microenvironment, but leave the tregs in other parts of the body untouched. So like a surgical strike on the tumor's peacekeepers, yes. leaving the rest of the immune system's peacekeeping force intact. Exactly. And this level of precision could really help to minimize those risks of autoimmune side effects. Another exciting area of research is focused on identifying biomarkers things that can help predict which patients are most likely to respond well to these FOXP3 targeted therapies. So looking for clues that tell us who will benefit the most from this type of treatment. Precisely. Biomarkers could be incredibly valuable in tailoring treatment plans and making sure we're giving patients the most effective therapy for their situation. But all this research is still ongoing, right? We're not at the point where these treatments are readily available. Right. It seems like the potential of FOXP3 targeted therapies is huge but we're still in the early stages of unlocking their power. Yeah, the research is evolving. Mm. And there are still hurdles to overcome, but there's a lot of excitement in the scientific community. This is a field that's grimming with possibilities. And in the next part of our deep dive, we'll explore some of the most promising directions this research is taking and what it could mean for the future of cancer care. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive on FOXP3 from its role as like the master conductor of our immune system's peacekeepers to its potential as like this target for these groundbreaking new cancer therapies. It really is fascinating how this one tiny protein can have such a huge impact on how our bodies fight disease. Yeah, absolutely. Before the break, we were talking about some of the challenges that researchers are facing when it comes to harnessing FOXP3's power. But I'm curious, like, what does the future hold for these new therapies? Well, one thing's for sure. This field is moving so fast I think we're going to see a surge in clinical trials testing the safety effectiveness of these FOXP3 targeted therapies in a lot more cancers. Oh, so going beyond just melanoma, breast cancer, and ovarian cancer, the cancers that were mentioned in the article? Exactly. Researchers are really eager to see how this approach could work against other types of tumors even the ones that haven't traditionally responded well to immunotherapy. Makes sense. It's all about finding the right tool for the job. Exactly. And as we keep learning more and more about the tumor microenvironment, we'll be able to better identify which patients are most likely to benefit from this type of therapy. You know, we're getting better at recognizing those specific characteristics of tumors that might make them vulnerable to this kind of immune attack. 
So it's kind of like gathering intel before sending in the troops, making sure the mission has a good chance of success. Great analogy. And uh, speaking of combining forces, another area that's generating a lot of excitement is the development of these combination therapies. So imagine pairing a FOXP3 targeted treatment with another immunotherapy that's already showing promise like checkpoint inhibitors or CAR-AT T-cell therapy. So hitting the cancer from all angles, not giving it any room to escape. Exactly. By strategically combining these different approaches, we could overcome the limitations of any single therapy, potentially leading to more powerful and lasting responses. And who knows, as we delve even deeper into the mechanisms of FOXP3, we might discover brand new therapeutic strategies we haven't even thought of yet. Now that's what I call thinking outside the box. This all feels so hopeful. It sounds like we're on the verge of a paradigm shift in how we treat cancer. There's definitely a sense of optimism in the scientific community. The potential of FOXP3 targeted therapies is vast. Mm. And we're only just beginning to scratch the surface of what's possible. Yeah, it's like we're witnessing a revolution in medicine, moving away from just trying to kill cancer cells and moving towards empowering the body's own defenses to fight back. It is a revolution in a way, a shift towards a more personalized approach, harnessing the power and complexity of the immune system. And FOXP3 is right at the heart of it all. This has been such an eye-opening deep dive. I feel like I have a whole new perspective on this whole dance between our immune system and cancer. It's a dance that's full of surprises for sure. And the more we learn about it, the better we'll be able to influence its choreography, tipping the balance in favor of health and healing. Well, a huge thank you to our listeners for joining us on this journey of discovery. We hope you found this deep dive into FOXP3 as fascinating as we have. Indeed. And remember, knowledge is power. And the more we understand about these complex processes in our bodies, the better we can advocate for our own health and well-being. And on that note, we encourage you to keep exploring, delve deeper into this world of scientific research, stay curious, ask questions, and never stop learning. Absolutely. (laughs) Until next time, keep those minds engaged and keep those questions flowing. We'll be back soon with another deep dive into the fascinating world of science and discovery. Until then, stay curious.